Hey everyone, in this video, I am going to show you my method for very quickly and efficiently editing voiceover in Logic Pro. Whether you have recorded voiceover for an audiobook, or maybe you're doing a podcast that doesn't have a video component, or in my case, I often record voiceover for videos where I need to type up a script, record the voiceover, and then use that voiceover as a reference for adding in video or graphics or diagrams, whatever it might be. And there are four things that I almost always do when I'm editing voiceover just to make this process quicker and more efficient. So I'm gonna show you how to do this right now. And I also realize that hearing me talk in the tutorial and then hearing my voiceover in the edit might be a little bit confusing. So I'll put this little yellow box around the window anytime you're hearing the voiceover in the edit. Okay, so I've got a voiceover here. The voiceover is basically just me uh, explaining the difference between TS and TRS connectors and a really basic difference between unbalanced and balanced connections. So if I start from the very beginning, you'll see I start off with a mistake. You'll see there's a bunch of other mistakes and you know gaps in between the phrases and breaths and long pauses that need to be removed. Hey everyone, have you ever want... Hey everyone, welcome back. Have you ever wondered why some quarter inch cables have a tip and a sleeve with a thin separator in between and other and others have a tip, a ring and and others have a tip, a ring and a, so you can see there's a lot to cut out. And, you know, we want this to sound like a polished voiceover, like I made no mistakes, right? And so that's the that's the whole goal here. So let me show you the first two things I do to get started. The first thing is I go up to my Snap to Grid options and I turn that off completely. And I also want to use the Marquee tool. So I use the Marquee tool as a selection tool to drag over areas and hit delete. And, you know, not snapping to a grid is what we want here because we're not working to a musical grid. We're basically ignoring the grid here. The second thing I do is I go to my drag modes and I set this to shuffle left. Now, the reason why I use shuffle left is when you make a deletion, just like so, it will automatically shuffle over the audio. Hey everyone, have you ever want? Hey everyone, welcome back. Have you ever want? So let's say I wanna cut out this mistake and I want to cut out uh, the gap here. I can just drag over this, hit delete. It automatically shuffles everything over. I can shorten this long pause. Over here, there's another long pause. I can pull that out. Maybe I wanna get rid of this breath here. And so this is a really uh, quick and easy way to shuffle over your clips and not have to you know, drag your clips around and, and mess around with the trimming and pacing uh, manually. Hey everyone, welcome back. Have you ever wondered why some quarter inch cables have a tip and a sleeve with a thin separator in between? And other and others have a tip, a ring and and others have a tip, a ring and and others have a tip so I can make a big selection like that and cut all of that out. Separator in between. And others have a tip, a ring and a sleeve. Now another thing I often do is I will go up to navigate and I will come down to play button options. And by default, the play from marquee selection and play from cycle start should be on. That's typically the default setting, but I like to turn on this one as well, play from selected region. What this does is it will play from whatever region you have selected. And others have a tip, a ring and a sleeve with two separating. So I made a mistake there. Let's cut that out click to start playback there with two with two separating boundaries. And then the other thing is with shuffle turned on, I can trim and it'll auto shuffle everything over. Let's get rid of this little gap here and then let's start playback from here. And others have a tip, a ring and a sleeve with two separating boundaries. Well, this has to do with whether the cable is carrying an unbalanced or balanced audio signal. Let's get rid of that breath there, and then we'll get rid of this long pause. So this shuffle editing in the video world 
is called ripple editing. It's a ripple edit. That's the video term, or at least that's what it's called in Premiere. But one of the things that I really miss about video editing in uh, Logic is the ability to speed up the playback as I'm editing because I don't necessarily need to hear everything at the you know the pace it was recorded at. I if I want to do this quicker, I want to hear things in double time or you know 1.5 times speed. Um, you can actually mimic this using VeriSpeed in Logic Pro. So what I I like to do is I'll come up here and I'll right click or control click select customize control bar and display and I'll make sure the display is set to custom I'll turn on VeriSpeed and then you can add a percentage to this so if you want it to be 50% faster you can type in 50% faster and this will play back the track 50% faster so this just lets me listen quicker and therefore I can get done with my work quicker well, this has to do with whether the cable is carrying an unbalanced or balanced audio signal. Your typical instrument cable has what's called a T. Your typical instrument cable has your typical instrument cable has what's called a TS connect. So we got that mistake there. I can just trim this up and with the shuffle edit, it just automatically shuffles everything over. Let's get rid of that breath. Let's get rid of this breath as well. And when you get more used to editing voiceover like you do it all the time, you can sometimes just kind of eyeball things like you get used to reading the waveforms. So, you know, in a lot of ways, this is different than mixing where it's like, you know, everyone always says, don't mix with your eyes, mix with your ears. Well, in a lot of ways, I'm editing with my eyes, not my ears. Sometimes I'll go through and I'll just kind of get rid of gaps, get rid of breaths. I can kind of just see where the, the breaths are. If you have trouble seeing the waveform, maybe it's a little soft, you can always come up here and increase uh, the zoom on the waveform just to see some of those breaths a little bit better. Like there's a breath. This is an unbalanced connection, meaning that the tip carries the signal and the sleeve is the ground. So there are only two points of contact, the tip and the sleeve. For TRS connectors, at least in pro audio applications, these carry a balanced signal, meaning there are three points of contact. The tip and ring carry the, the, tip and ring carry the audio. Let's delete that. The tip and ring carry the audio signal and the sleeve is the ground. The same goes for XLR connectors, three points of contact. With balanced audio, let's get rid of that breath. With balanced audio signals, you're actually sending two versions of the same signal, one on the tip and one on the ring. But with the polarity of, let's go ahead and just get rid of some of these long pauses as well. Now, I know someone, if I don't mention this, someone will mention in the comments, well, why don't you just use the, you know, the strip silence or remove silence feature. Uh, that's because it strip silence will add anchor points, which makes this process like way more of a pain than it has to be. And also it's just, it's not accurate. You know, sometimes it'll cut out things that don't need to be cut out. Other times, you know, it won't cut out things that need to be cut out. Balanced audio signals can typically be sent further, so longer cable runs, so longer cable runs of 50 or... Okay, so here's another great example here. When you have two phrases where you need to edit, but you don't really have a gap in between the phrases, you kind of have to start, uh, you know, looking at the waveforms. Uh, you can listen to it, obviously, but you also want to identify um, similar waveforms in different takes. So longer cable runs, so longer cable runs. So the C in cable runs is right here and right here. So what I'll do is I'll just select that area, hit delete. It'll automatically ripple delete or shuffle uh, it over. Because of this, balanced audio signals can typically be sent further. So longer cable runs of 50 or 100 feet are totally fine. And they won't pick up as, and then here's another edit. We'll get rid of all that. And they won't pick up as much noise along the way as unbalanced signals. This is why you can typically, this is why you don't. Yeah, so let's get rid of this gap here. Let's get rid of this mistake here. This is why you don't typically find guitar cables longer than about 20 feet. And there's the end. And so then once you're done, you go ahead and just turn VeriSpeed off and give the whole thing a listen. But one more step that I do here is I drag over all of the regions and I go over to the region inspector and I go to my fade out options here under more. I'll create a crossfade and I'll double click here and give my crossfade a value in milliseconds. I typically will do like five or six milliseconds and what that'll do is it'll add a batch crossfade to everything there is a faster way to do that there's a shortcut for batch crossfades but this is the way i like to do it because i like to set the fade uh time for each of these and i just give it a listen through typically I, i'll actually listen to it in various speed but, but i want to show you what it sounds like without various speed in so let's just play the whole thing hey everyone welcome back 
Have you ever wondered why some quarter inch cables have a tip and a sleeve with a thin separator in between, and others have a tip, a ring, and a sleeve with two separating boundaries? Well, this has to do with whether the cable is carrying an unbalanced or balanced audio signal. Your typical instrument cable has what's called a TS connector. This is an unbalanced connection, meaning that the tip carries the signal and the sleeve is the ground. So there are only two points of contact, the tip and the sleeve. For TRS connectors, at least in pro audio applications, these carry a balanced signal, meaning there are three points of contact. The tip and ring carry the audio signal and the sleeve is the ground. The same goes for XLR connectors, three points of contact. With balanced audio signals, you're actually sending. Now, as you're listening, if you find that you want to maybe space out the phrasing a little bit, all you gotta do is trim. And because you've got shuffle mode on, it will just move everything over three points of contact. With balanced audio signals, you're, or in this case, I don't know, I like there's a little something in there that I, oh, that's the end of, uh, <laughs> that's the end of a breath. So I may need to get real tight in here and then extend it in this direction. Connectors, three points of contact. With balanced audio signals, yeah, still a little bit of something in there. Let's try to trim it up a bit more. Points of contact. With balanced audio signals, you're actually sending two versions of the same signal. One on the, t and here's one where maybe I need to tighten it up a little bit versions of the same signal, one on the tip and one on the ring, but with the polarity of one inverted. This is called a differential signal. At the receiving end, the gear flips the inverted signal back. Maybe a little more spacing here. Signal. At the receiving end, the gear flips the inverted signal back into phase and sums the two signals together. This not only strengthens the signal, it's a little bit of something in there. Let's trim that up and sums the two signals together. This not only strengthens the signal, but it also cancels out any noise or interference that may have been picked up along the cable, because that noise is identical on both lines, but opposite in polarity, so it gets nulled out. Because of this, balanced audio signals can typically be sent further, so longer cable runs of 50 or 100 feet are totally fine, and they won't pick up as much noise along the way as unbalanced signals. This is why you don't typically find guitar cables longer than about 20 feet. And that's it. Those are four, well, maybe five of my favorite tips for editing voiceover quickly and efficiently in Logic Pro. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Remember, the channel is now 100% viewer funded, no sponsors, no ad reads, no brand deals, just educational content to help you make your own music and record and edit your own projects. Your support through liking, sharing, and subscribing truly helps to keep this going, and I appreciate it more than you know. If you'd like to go a step further, though, you can head over to my website, logicproguide.com. I've got full downloadable courses with no ads. These come with demo projects, so you can follow along with me. You'll also find my custom sample library there. I've got some multi-tracks you can use for mixing practice, and I plan on adding even more multi-tracks in the future. Thank you so much for the support, and thanks for watching.